Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster, and this is a way for me to show everyone that I have a terrible memory. We're gonna go through runway shows. I'm trying to guess designer, the house that actually made it, if that's different than the designer, and then the season that it came in. Play along. Oh, wait, okay, wait, the hands thing means that, uh, the hands motif means it's the boyfriend skirt. So this is Comme de Garçon. It's gonna be mainline Comme de Garçon, so Ray Kawakubo, and it's, when was the boyfriend stuff? I think that was all in one season and it wasn't like spread out over time. <sighs> Comme de Garçon is so hard because nothing with Ray is ever based on trends or anything. Is it uh, spring 2017? Fall, winter, okay, a whole a whole decade off, great. The thing that made the motif of the, the boyfriend hands actually stick out in my head so much was that we got to see this at the Momu when I went there to interview Walter Van Buren-Donk and Yan Yan Vanessa last year. Good hair and makeup for this show. This is a cool one. I got that uh, mostly wrong. If you guess the designer, that's one point. If you guess the, the house that designed it, that's two points. And then if you guess the season, that's three points. So play along you get five, five points possible for each one. Oh man, that, okay, so my first guess, even though I don't know why I'm guessing like this, I might, what immediately pops to mind is either John Galliano at Dior or probably more likely Walter Van Buren because this is just so busy. And the shoes also really feel like Walter. We've got a woman with blue hair sitting in the audience. And so that makes me think that this is a Walter show rather than a Dior show. We have a lot of standing room, which again makes me think it's closer to Walter. I'm gonna go with Walter and it's gonna be, I, I'm guessing Walter Van Buren Donk, it's not wild and lethal trash. So I'm guessing it's Walter at Walter Van Buren Donk brand. And I'm just gonna guess spring 98. It was wild and lethal trash. Get out. Yeah, the head the headpiece really like demonstrates that it's Walter and also the the color palette of the way that like the like the um astrology girl like wall art thing as a skirt and then that, the way that's paired with the top is very Walter and the sneakers are like a bright yellow sneakers that's like a dead giveaway as Walter Van Buren Donk. It's crazy though. I think of the wild and lethal trash stuff more as like the Mexican wrestling mask type of thing. Like that's what would always make me say like definitely wild and lethal trash. All right, missed it. I'm like, I'm like not happy with myself here unless I get like all five points. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, so this is Jacques Mousse uh, designed by Simone. And this is my favorite model, a dude a And this is the, uh, first Jacques Mousse show that I went to, and that is going to be, because Jacques Mousse shows off season, if I get this wrong, I'm gonna be so mad. They show off season, and so it makes it, it makes it hard. I, I think, even though the menswear week, that it was, it was the day after menswear week ended, and the menswear week was for spring, summer 23, I think that this was confusing because for Jacques Mousse, it's fall 22. I cannot, okay, I got one, I got one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Getting all five points for this is like, I'm, I'm so glad I at least got one, okay. It was crazy though, I had to leave the after party for this early and Adu Dikesh showed up because she went back to her hotel and then changed and then came back to the after party and she was like getting out of her car as I was like finding a car to leave and I was like struggling, it's this, it's not like me. Normally I'm not like this. I was like struggling to not like be like, oh my gosh, Adu Cash, hi, I, I, I love your runway, thank you for every, okay, good talk. <laughs> it was really hard to not do that. I played it super cool. Played it super cool in that I did not speak or make eye contact with her and got into the car and left. Okay, next. Oh, okay, cool. Right away, super, super iconic. This is Haute Couture and this is Victor and Rolf. And they did like the t-shirt slogan thing on the, the huge couture gowns. Victor and Rolf is mega avant-garde and always doing stuff that's very unusual. Haute Couture, spring 2018. <sighs> off by a year, off by a year. 
This this season was really interesting because it was kind of like as Vetmont as a brand was fading because I think this was right around the time when Demna left Vetmont. And it was like someone came into Couture and was more Vetmont than Vetmont. This was an interesting show. It was kind of a like a one trick show. There was just kind of one thing to it, but um, I liked this show a lot. It was cool. My favorite slogan on one of the dresses was, sorry, I'm late, I didn't want to come. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, next. Oh, okay. This is, uh, okay. Uh, it's, um. <sighs> if you've been watching this channel for any length of time and you cannot get all five points on this, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I've missed some incredibly obvious ones on this. This is Maison Martin Margiela by Maison Martin, uh, by, by Mason Martin Margiela. It's Maison Martin Margiela by Martin Margiela, spring, summer, 1990. This show was, in some ways, the best show that the Maison ever put on. And it's so crazy because the misconceptions from this show at the time are still being carried over to today. Because the whole thing was that all these, all these boys that are up front and the, the kid that's on her shoulders and stuff, those are all kids from the local neighborhood that played in that this area is a, it's a public park, it's a playground. And these kids were always there playing after school, and so the, the team didn't want to just like kick them out for the evening. They were like, we need to give them something to do so we'll pay for a field trip they couldn't afford to do the field trip so they were like okay well at least the kids get to watch the show and so they made it where the whole front area was just reserved for the little kids so the models were just like playing with them and being like oh yeah you want to be part of it let's go and they like put them on their shoulders and just walked around it was all very spur of the moment and at the time the critics were like how dare you use these children of color to like make your message more clear. When in fact, there we, we have lots of documentation that this was a totally spontaneous event. And I still, occasionally, I will still see things on Twitter where people are bringing that up, like being like critical of this for that reason. But it, it was totally spur of the moment. It was like this great demonstration of like innocence in a very true way on a runway. It was really well executed. Beautiful show. Yes! Okay, this is uh, Balenciaga Haute Couture by Demna. Now, legally, just Demna. This is the final look even, I think. I mean, we have the number 63 down there, so if it's not final, it at least is very far off. But I know that it is final because it is the bridal look. It was their 50th Haute Couture show, um, and that is... I, I'm just gonna get, I see, I don't, I don't know because they don't show on calendar. They just show the couture stuff once a year. So they just showed couture and that would have been, if they just showed it in July, I think that's fall 22. Is this fall 21? Oh, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Oh. I'm just so happy. If if I if I didn't get any five pointers on this entire thing, they would they would like take away my license. I couldn't be a fashion critic anymore. But yeah, of course, this is the piece that ended up being worn by Kim Kardashian at the Donda release. It's based off of an old Cristobal Balenciaga design. They obviously changed a couple of things about it, but I think it's heavily inspired by... If you've been playing along, I want to know what your score was down in the comments. I, there's going to be like so many people who beat me. Even if you scored like two, like comment and make a joke about it. Like let's, let's do, let's do public learning together. It is okay. I am, I am up here kind of embarrassing myself because I'm not getting perfect scores here. Okay, next. Oh, this is a hard one. Okay. So we are either in the early 90s here or the late 80s. This looks like, okay, so we have, I feel like I'm being tricked because this looks off rip like Versace or Dolce & Gabbana. It looks very Italian because we're just doing the like goddess style dress. The hair looks very, if it's on a runway, that kind of hair probably would have been late 80s. But I feel like I'm being tricked because like McQueen did this kind of stuff where there's just these beautiful body hugging dresses. I'm trying to look down at the feet and see what it's actually made of. The way that that is like kind of bunching around her feet and especially the model walking behind her with her back face towards us, I'm guessing that this is silk and not a jersey. If it was a jersey, I would be because it, it really looks like a jersey wrapped around her legs. I'm, I'm going with a silk, because silk kind of like, silk is not like fully fluid when it's like wrapped around your body. It like, it's easy for the silk to kind of like, almost like block itself. That probably didn't make any sense. If it looked more like jersey, I would guess McQueen. I think it's Versace or Dolce & Gabbana. I'm just gonna go with 
Versace, and I'm going to say Spring 98. Halston Spring 98. I get, okay, so I still get three points because I guessed the season. Man, Halston? Crazy. And it's crazy that Halston was doing this look with this hair and that makeup and stuff in the late 90s. Did y'all know that most of Halston's stuff is housed in Tennessee right now? It's in a basement at a university in Tennessee. That's super bizarre. Haven't had that happen before. I guessed the season right and the designer totally wrong. Next. Two hours later. Okay, so I would guess Helmut Lang, if not for the tops of the socks. This is 90s, and my guess, this is like just romantic enough to be Anda Mulemeester. I'm gonna go with Anda Mulemeester, fall, winter, 95. Oh my gosh. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. You know what threw me off is that the, the socks, I looked at them and I was like, oh, that's like way too sexy for Helmut Lang. That's got to be like, instead of it being sexy, it's probably a more like romantic idea. And so it's Andy Mulemeester, but it is a sexy play on that kind of sock. And I completely forgot that a huge part of Helmut Lang's lineage is the like bondage gear and more, more importantly, like the laundry, the straight up lingerie stuff. Wow. I got, I got duped by that one. Yes. I love this look so much. Okay, so this is Vetman by Demna Vasalia at the time. He would have had his full name still, Demna Vasalia. And I think this was still the time even when it was multiple designers. So it's Demna Guram and then two or three other people that I don't think we ever learned the identity of. But Vetma was never a like single person's vision. I believe it is now because Guram runs it by himself. But at the time, I think it was a small collective and all of them equally split the load of creative director. So I get, I get the extra point for designer, I'm pretty sure. Dimna Vesalia, Vetma. Y'all, I'm so terrible about seasons. This was spring, summer, 2019. Spring 20. Okay. <laughs> that t-shirt, by the way, is one of the coolest t-shirts that Vetma has ever produced. So that's a recreation and a little bit of a variant on design of a t-shirt that was around during the recent Lebanese Civil War. It was given out to journalists and it says, don't shoot in three different languages so that the journalists could go around and take pictures of the conflict while it was happening, but everyone would know that it's like, oh, that is an actual like civilian journalist. There's obviously lots of funny Vetma stuff like with the like Internet Explorer logo that says ecstasy and stuff. There's lots of really like cheeky, funny things they do. This one was like a deep cut of the t-shirt world and it was so cool that they remade it. Also, I love this show. This is, I mean, for, for what Demna's goals are, this show was almost entirely perfect. Okay, I immediately have no idea. Okay, so it's a it's a netted tank top over a regular tank top. It looks like there's something shimmery. No, it's not it's not shimmery. It's just um the knit is more open in certain places than others, so it's kind of distressed. The t-shirt or the tank top underneath says holy. The makeup looks like Andamulamister. Oh wait, no, the use of the word holy is an Andamulamister motif. I'm almost positive. Shout out the Fashion Archive for probably getting this look immediately. I'm just gonna guess Andamulamister fall, winter, or no, spring, summer, 2008. Well, at least I got that. Hey, by the way, the lighting issues in these videos are not going to last forever. I, I have a plan for the lighting. It's gonna get fixed. It's just, we just give me a little bit. Oh, this is very hard. Oh wait, no, 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 I know what this is. This is, um. oh man, if the camera had been backed up a little bit, I would have gotten it like immediately. But I think this is um, Mark Jacobs, Perry Ellis, and I guess this is, it was the, the beginning of grunge in fashion. Spring 96, spring 93, no. I'm telling you, man, I'm terrible with numbers. Numbers and like timelines and the order of things. And also like, I am terrible at grocery stores. Like, uh-uh. Oh, and also I guess it should be said, this is Naomi Campbell. I think Naomi was asked to kind of like tone it back a little bit. Like don't be like full Naomi Campbell out there. And I think she broke the rules and was just like extra mega Naomi Campbell. <sighs> I can't find her in here. Oh wait, there she is. Oh, she's like, oh no, she's not first look. 
Yeah, she was a little bit extra in this one. I think the goal was to have everybody walking kind of like this model, but a lot of them just kind of like didn't catch the vision at all and were just sort of like, I'm just gonna walk my normal walk. Mark was like, do the thrift store walk. I just want you to like walk like you're just like at a thrift store and you're like paying $5 for jeans. Okay, next. Oh man, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. If the pillar, my initial guess was that this was either Versace or Gucci by Tom Ford. I think it's Gucci by Tom Ford because the suit is velvet and the, I can't tell what the loafers, I don't know what the Gucci loafers look like back then. Oh, can we see with the belt? I think that, no, it's just a regular belt buckle. It's not the G's, dang. Tom was doing a lot of the G's. But that pillar in the background, I'm almost positive I've seen that in a Gucci show. I'm just going to guess that this is the super iconic one, which I think is Gucci by Tom Ford, spring, summer, 98. Fall, winter, 95. Ugh. And that's the super icon, I think that's the super iconic one that like critics were obsessed with. I'm telling you, man, it's the chronology of things. I just get it so mixed up. But this is a, this is a men's take on, I think the red velvet version of this that was a women's look that is like one of the most iconic things that Tom Ford ever made at Gucci, I think. Okay, and next, Troop. Okay, so despite the overall look looking nothing like Andy Mulemeester, I've guessed a lot of Andy Mulemeester here. That bag bracelet thing looks like a bag bracelet thing that is a current item that's being offered by Andy Mulemeester. But there's no way Anne would offer that in this like royal glossy blue. Also, there's no way Anne would do a floral like that and there's no way this like high-waisted thing. This has got to be, this has got to be Y Project because those that, that strange high-waisted thing where I'm like looking at it and I'm not even sure how that's staying on her body. And then also it has, the, they have the ruched bodysuit that's like a swimsuit, but it's like this loose, like Henley type of thing. This has got to be Glenn Martin's Y Project and I'm just going to guess that it's like 2019, maybe spring. Okay, cool. Some, got some of it. Got some of it. Dang, what's Timothy Chalamet doing down there at the bottom? That's not actually Timothy Chalamet. Okay. So this is, okay, this is fun. So this is Maison Martin Margiela. I'm, I'm guessing that it is still Maison Martin Margiela and not Maison Margiela because I think this is Matthew Blasey era when Matthew Blasey was the creative director. He was the creative director for the men's side and then they moved him up to be the boss when Martin left unexpectedly. Um, you can tell it's Matthew Blasey era because the Kanye Yeezus mask thing. That was Matthew Blasey that did the like all over diamond ones. Ready to wear, I'm going to guess spring, summer 2013. Dang. Oh, and it's couture too. <sighs> and see, this is extra painful because Matthew Blasey's era of Margiela is one of the biggest things that got me into fashion really early. Damn. Okay, Matthew, I failed you, I'm so sorry. All right, next. Oh no, oh shoot, I'm gonna miss this. Oh, because that, that one girl just got married in this. Um, first of all, what is this guy doing down here in the corner? Okay, I remember that that woman that was getting married who looked so cool, and I remember that her bridal stuff was made by Vivian Westwood, so is this, is it, because it does not look like Vivian Westwood, other than it just being like generally sexy. No, okay, wait, sharp, sharp right turn. Yves Saint Laurent at his eponymous label, I'm gonna guess spring 98. YSL Couture 99. Wow, I'm glad that I did the sharp right turn. And Yves Saint, Yves Saint Laurent was, it was still being run by Yves, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was still run by Yves. Oh no. I have definitely looked through this whole show before. Is this Chilean? I think it's Chilean. Man, but I have no idea when from, if it is Chilean. Chilean did a lot of nudity, and I think Chilean did a lot of white. The head, the head pieces especially are making me think Chilean. I'm gonna go with Hussein Chilean, spring 2002. No, completely wrong. Whoa. I'm embarrassed. What? Okay, 
guessing Chalion and guessing undercover undercover and Chalion are not similar in basically any way. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know that June used nudity much at all ever. I have looked through this whole show before on Archive PDF. Shout out Archive PDF, literally like the best fashion resource on the internet. Incredible. That is archivepdf.net, by the way, if you want to look at it. Wow, I am so embarrassed. Okay, June, if you're watching, I'm sorry, dude. Okay, well, this is uh, a super important piece in the story of Virgil Abloh, Louis Vuitton, and I believe this is Fall 22 menswear. Fall 21, okay. Folks, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna um, just get a... I'm gonna be a copywriter. See ya. I do not deserve the title of fashion critic. Damn, this is hella frustrating though. That like, I can't, I, I clearly need to brush up on the actual like seasons that things happen. I need to start like quizzing myself on this more often. Yeah, but this, this piece was super important because it was a combination of the kente cloth and then I think a, a Scottish print mixed in with the kente cloth, mixed in with the Louis monogram. And then there's the Western belt buckle, which was that motif of black cowboys. And then he's got the hoodie on that I think says, Tour yeah, tourist versus purist, which is the thing that he did with Lawrence Wiener, the modern artist. This is like a lot of very Virgil things, like all mashed into a single look. I wonder what happened to that kente cloth piece. Like does Louis have that just in their archives or did that ever, did they make like a few of them and sell them? Yeah, that was a, that was a sick look. That was such an incredible, that short film was just like, Dasa go join the Patreon. Here's my final score. I, I don't, I did, I, I did just okay. Everybody post your final score for real in the comments. Let's all like talk about like close calls we had. Like, did you have any like close calls where you were like about to say something, but then you submitted something else? What was your final score? Go get, go get fashion friends of yours and like make them do it and like see what their final score was. This is fun. I don't know. Do y'all want this more often? I, I had a ton of fun doing this. Go follow me on Instagram. I have like 10% of the followers there that I do here on YouTube. Please help me balance that out a little bit. I will talk to everyone later. I love you so much. Goodbye.